So in this example, we have a car driving along a rural road where the speed limit is 70 kilometers per hour. At 3 o'clock, its odometer reads 18,075 kilometers. 18 minutes later, it reads 18,100 kilometers. We're going to prove that the driver violated the speed limit at some instance between 3 and 318. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, let's see why the mean value theorem has any business cropping up here. So let's say that's the section of the road we travel along. So our odometer reads 18,075 when we start. And then at the end of 18 minutes, it reads 18,100. So this is when time is zero. Let's imagine at three o'clock, that's our time zero. And then 18 minutes later, that's our odometer reading. So how far have we traveled? Well, we look at the difference of our odometer readings, and we see that we've traveled along a strip of 25 kilometers. Okay, so in 18 minutes, we've traveled 25 kilometers. I don't know my speedometer reading. Notice I've got my odometer reading, my distance traveled. I don't know my speedometer reading at any point along there. And that's what we're going to try to conclude. We're going to try to conclude that the speedometer had a value that was larger than 70 kilometers per hour at some point along here. So with the information given, what can I find? Well, I can find my average velocity. What's my average velocity? So the average velocity is the distance you travel divided by the time of the travel. So the average velocity is 25 divided by 18, and that's kilometers per minute. OK, let's express this in kilometers per hour. So this would be 25 divided by 18 times 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour. So that's kilometers per hour. And what is this? Well, uh, I can factor the 18 as 3 times 6, and then cancel 6 up top. So this would be 250 divided by 3 kilometers per hour, or in other words, 83 and a third kilometers per hour. So that's my average velocity, 83 and a third. Okay, so we look at this and we say, oh, my average velocity was larger than the speed limit. Does that mean anything? Does that mean my instantaneous velocity had to be larger than the speed limit at some point along my travels? So right now, all we have is information about the average velocity. Ah, but this is where the mean value theorem comes in. The mean value theorem says, if that's your average velocity, then there had to be a place where your instantaneous velocity was equal to your average velocity. You can't have 83.3 as your average velocity unless at some point along your travels, your instantaneous velocity was that as well. That's what the mean value theorem says. So there had to be a place where you were speeding. I don't know when. I don't know if it was right at the beginning or right at the end or somewhere in between. But I know that you had to be speeding at some point along your travels. So let's actually write this down. Let's, let's be a little bit more formal here. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to say, let f be the odometer reading odometer reading at time t. And the odometer reading, well, that's just a proxy for position. So f is going to represent our position at time t. So what do we know about it? Well, we can assume f is continuous and it's differentiable. It's just by the nature of how we travel in a car. Travel continuously and smoothly. So it's got to be continuous and differentiable. So we'll make our conclusion here. By the mean value theorem, there is a C in the interval from 0 to 18, such that the instantaneous velocity is equal to the average velocity. So F of 18 minus F of 0 all over 18. And this we already worked out. That was 83. This is our average velocity we worked out here on the right. That's 83.3 kilometers per hour. So the mean value theorem is what allows us to conclude that the instantaneous velocity somewhere along your trip 
had to be equal to your average velocity. Our average velocity exceeded the speed limit, so at some point our instantaneous velocity had to as well. Therefore, the car was speeding at some instant along the road. Okay, so there's a, an example of how we can use the mean value theorem to prove the existence of a point without actually knowing exactly where the point happened.